Doc Talk is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection. Hi there, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. I'm sure glad you joined us today. We're gonna have a great show. Dr. Greg Hanselcheck from the Diagnostic Lab here at K-State is going to join us this morning and he's gonna to talk to us about cow abortions. Sure to be a great show, stay tuned. We started using Multimin about four years ago. We started out first in our own cow herd and our own heifer replacement heifer program just to uh, see how it'd work, um, experiment with it. We don't like to put a new pro product out there on their clients unless we've tried it ourselves or there's a lot of data behind it that we like. Um, we had really good results with it our first year, uh, really in, uh, were happy with the way things worked. Uh, so we decided to start using our clients and we have been now for three years and I would say 90 to 95% of our clients use Multimin. This segment is brought to you by Purple Wave Auction, the easiest, most straightforward way to sell used equipment. Purple Wave, straight, simple, sold. Well, Greg, welcome to the show. Glad to be here, Dan. Well, it's always fun to have you here, and you're the Director of Food Animal Field Investigations at the Kansas State Diagnostic Laboratory, and that means that you're getting out in the state and you're working with veterinarians and practitioners on different cases and field investigations, I assume. That's exactly right. That's what my role is. Enjoy it? I do enjoy it. Well, I know that the <clears throat> practitioners uh, in the state of Kansas and the surrounding states sure enjoy working with you, and we appreciate the good work that you've been doing here to support uh, food animal practice and food animal production. Well, I sure appreciate that. But we're going to talk about something that's not necessarily a good topic when we're raising these cows and these calves, and <clears throat> we start to think about the price of these cows and calves lately. We want to make sure we get as many of them on the ground as possible, so we're going to talk a little bit about abortions in, in cows and you know when should a person get concerned or how often do abortions occur you know just some general numbers or facts. Well that's a great question and like you said the, these calves are worth a lot so and it's hard sometimes it's hard to get those cows bred so we want to make sure that they as many of them calve as possible but the literature says when the producer gets to about three to five percent of those cows that are expected to calve that they start having abortions and they need to be concerned. Um, really, that depends on the on the producer. Okay, so <clears throat> some producers are going to see a you know a slight increase in abortion, some of them are bigger, and depending on their ability to monitor these or how tightly they market their animals is dependent on how much that's going to affect their bottom line. That's exactly right. Some producers, the first calf, the first two calves are going to be concerned. Other producers are going to kind of ride the storm before they get too concerned, and then they'll call their veterinarian. There's really no right or wrong. It just it's de producer dependent. Okay, so then we get into a couple of these these uh, abortions and we see a couple of them and you know what are some of the things I guess as a practitioner if you had a client that was having a couple of abortions what are some of the things or questions you're going to ask that producer you know I mean when or how big or yeah there's a lot of questions one is when when do you expect calving to start okay because some of these are probably not abortions they're just stillbirths if we're going to start in the next 10 days to two weeks and we find we think we have some abortions those are technically still births those calves were probably born alive and just didn't make it that's different than if they were, were two or three months away from calving and we start slipping some calves that, that's a true abortion we need to discern the difference between the two okay and and once you discern the timing is, is that which is key what what's next well then it's then it's just a matter of are you over what you, are number of abortions over what you would expect to be over? Okay. So let's say you have one or you have 10, is that more than you typically expect in any other year? Because sometimes it's not, it's, it's a normal uh, rate for this herd, sometimes it isn't. We need to find out if there's a problem first. That's okay. always the first question. And so, so you're gonna, from that point, be able to determine, okay, if we usually have a, a 5% abortion rate, now we're at a 10, now it's time to be concerned. That's right, and that's where records come important. Come into importance. I was going to say, somebody's got to keep track that's of that. That's exactly and right. And I think the, then that's the way that you decide, okay, let's get the veterinarian in here and, and start doing a diagnosis. I think when we come back from break, let's continue this discussion, start to get in some of the etiologies of abortion. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're sure glad you joined. 
This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. There's something wrong. His head is down. He's clearly stressed. He's worried sick about BRD. That's why there's prescription Zactran for BRD treatment and control in high-risk cattle. Get a rapid response plus 10-day treatment and control in a single dose so you can stop worrying and get back to business. For use in cattle only, do not treat cattle within 35 days of slaughter. Because a discard time in milk has not been established, do not use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older or in calves to be processed for veal. The effects of Zactran on bovine reproductive performance, pregnancy, and lactation have not been determined. Don't worry yourself sick. Talk to your veterinarian about a real alternative for BRD treatment and control. Because it's critical, it's Zactran. From Marielle, a leading animal health company. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. Be ready for breeding soundness exams with Neogen's new and improved ElectroJack 6. Features a new wireless design, improved waterproofing, and more power for quicker and easier collections. Its newly designed probe features a tapered angle for easier insertion, and new rubberized material adds durability. ElectroJack 6 can be used with rams, boars, and bulls of all sizes. To order or for more information, contact Neogen at 800-621-8829 or your local animal health distributor. This segment is brought to you by Double D Family Mat Shop. Injured livestock could mean injured profits. Protect yours with no-slip mats from Double D Family Mat Shop. Hi there. Welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here at the College of Veterinary Medicine. I'm joined by Dr. Greg Hanselcheck. And we're discussing abortions in cows. And we talked about the timing, and we've talked about normal versus abnormal. And really, the producer's got to define normal on their own based on geography, their herd type, the age of their he heifers or cows, different things like that. But what are some of the things that cause abortions? You know, when we start to think about bacteria or toxins or, or different things that we could maybe try to manage around, what are some of the things you see that, that cause abortions? In our laboratory, the, the number one uh, defined cause are bacterial abortions. Okay. So we so we have one of them is our cannel bacterium pyogenes. It's just a it's a bacteria that's in all cows, it's in liver abscesses, foot rots, all kinds of things. Somehow that bacteria gets into the bloodstream, gets into the placenta, and then we have a we have a dead calf. That's mm. that's the number one cause that we diagnose here. Then there's the viruses, the IBRs. Everybody's heard about BVD. Uh, those are our two major viruses that we that we find. Uh, and then there's a, a what we call a protozoa. It's uh, kind of related to coccidiosis. Uh, okay. Most producers would know what that is. It's uh, it's called Neospora caninum. Okay. Uh, we're finding that more and more uh, often than we did in the past. So when we start <clears throat> to look at, is there any way to differentiate based on time or based on when these cows are boarding on on what the etiology may be? In the past, we always, we broke it down in trimesters. So if we had abortions, uh, say the first six months of gestation, we could say it's probably one of these viruses or one of these bacterias, and that we wouldn't see it later on. Well, we're finding out that these organisms can cause abortions at any time. Really? So that's kind of been thrown out the window just recently. So it gets to be more and more important that we get a handle on this diagnostically, because if we can't separate them out based on time and clinical history, now we're gonna have to get samples in. That's exactly right. We can't tell by month anymore. So, the the uh, how do they? How does? I mean, you said the Arcanobacter that that mm -hmm. the cows carry that naturally, kind of like pneumonia, where they carry Mannheim in their lungs yep. and they get stressed, and then yep. that seems to cause trigger the the infection from the bacteria. What about the viruses? I mean, are, are, is that more of a cow to cow 
spread or is that something that they're harboring? It depends on the virus, but for instance, IBR, we know every herd has, there's IBR carriers in the herd. Okay. And something just sets it off where it starts spreading through the animals and, and maybe they weren't properly immunized against the virus or maybe they just didn't respond to the vaccine when it was given to them and that particular animal will suffer the consequences. Probably see the same thing when we have these persistently infected BBD animals. It could be in a herd. That's a harboring. big, yeah, the BVD is a big deal and that's exactly right. Typically when we have BVD uh, abortion outbreaks, we've got one of these persistently infected calves that was born with BVD that's just exposing all the pregnant animals to the virus. <laughs> and, and then lastly on the uh, Neospora uh, caninum, that one is carried since caninum's at the end of it mm -hmm. by dogs. Dogs and we think maybe coyotes and some people <laughs> are thinking maybe raccoons. It really? hasn't been proven, but um, yeah, that, that's, the, that's the source. They pass it in their feces and then the feces get ground up in the bale processor or whatever and fed to the cows and that's the way it spread. It's a big deal. It is a big deal. Great information. When we come back, we're going to talk about diagnostic workups in abortion cases. You're watching Doc Talk. We're sure glad you joined us. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Beef producers need a practical choice when antibiotic therapy is required. More than ever, they are reaching for non-prescription Noramycin 300 LA from Norbrook, specially formulated to produce sustained antibiotic blood levels up to four days in cattle. Noramycin 300 LA delivers economic, broad-spectrum disease management for pneumonia, shipping fever, pink eye, wound infections, and foot rot. See for yourself why Norbrook's Noramycin 300 LA is the practical choice for your herd. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. Here in Dallas, we're proud that our vehicles use an advanced biofuel called biodiesel. It's made from renewable resources like soybean oil, canola oil, even recycled cooking oil. This year, biodiesel will displace almost a billion gallons of fossil fuel nationwide. Our air is cleaner, our economy is stronger, and America's more energy independent. It's working here, it can work in your community. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. In a feedlot situation, we use uh, multi-men on a on-arrival basis. Maybe if they came in a little lighter weight, 550, 600 pounds. We use multi-men in high-stress cattle, high-risk cattle. Look, we're looking for a better response to our uh, vaccine. For some of the cattle that we're looking for when we use multi-men, um, they come in, maybe they look a little uh, mineral deficient. Uh, they come from parts of the country that are lower in certain mineral. So we use it on those cattle, um, it tends to make a big difference. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Normycin LA, Normectrum Plus, 1% and Poron, the practical choice for your herd. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University, joined by Dr. Greg Hanselcheck, who is the Director of Production Animal Field Investigations here at the Veterinary Diagnostic Lab and spends a lot of time in the field working with producers and practitioners on cases just like what we're discussing today. And you've been doing a tour uh, working with practitioners on abortion cases and diagnostic workups on these cases over the last several months. We have. We've been out in the state of Kansas uh, putting on night meetings for practitioners just to reinforce and, and refresh practitioners on the appropriate samples to send in, the importance of taking the, the right samples in order to get a diagnosis. Well, first of all, thank you for doing it because it's not easy to get out and go do these things, but secondly, um, it's a great service that you and the Diagnostic Lab provide the state of Kansas and with the increase in the value of these, these cows and calves, it's something that I think that people are going to be paying a little bit more attention to here over the next several years. When we have an abortion case, okay, and I know that you always recommend to work with a local practitioner, 
Absolutely. <laughs> but when we have these cases, you know, what are some of the things that you're coaching practitioners on the samples to take to send to you at the D-Lab? The best samples by far is the entire fetus and the placenta. Now we know that a lot of times you can't send a big fetus into the lab and sometimes it happens on the weekend so samples have to be taken but those are the two best samples we we can get. Sometimes people if, they, if they're having enough of these and they hit that threshold we were talking about earlier they just drive them in. That's exactly right. <laughs> let's skip the mail. Sure. Let's yep. just that's exactly let's right. Let's just we got today and this is important. Let's drive it straight to the D lab and get it there in a timely mm -hmm. fashion. Anything about the freshness of the sample and and that and your ability to work with it? Well, as as the fetus gets older after abortion, of course, our ability to find the diagnosis is, is slim. But a lot of times for cows, they get sick, something happens to the fetus and then it's days later before they ever uh, abort. So we know we're already behind the eight ball. So our recommendation is when producers and veterinarians decide to work something up, they get those tissues uh, collected now and get them sent to us overnight. Cool. Um, so so once they come to the D-Lab, what are you going to do with those samples, the the fetus and the placenta? What are you looking for with those? Well, we're going to, we're going to, we recommend that we get both fresh and fixed tissues or tissues that are in formaldehyde. Okay. And we're going to do two different things on the, on the fresh, we're going to look culture, we're going to look for bacteria, live viruses, those kind of things in those tissues. The fixed ones, we're going to actually look for the signs of the disease. So it, those are kind Disc of... Disproduction of the, of the tissues and, and yes. the clinical, you know, abnormalities associated microscopically with yes. these types of syndrome. The classical microscopic signs of particular diseases. That's exactly How long mean. from, say, when somebody sends you a sample until we get a diagnosis, generally? Because I know that's one thing that people always, well, I sent it to you yesterday, well, I don't have an answer. We typically say seven to ten days, okay. and a lot of the reason is we have to grow out the viruses, we have to grow out the bacteria, and that, that's not something that happens overnight. That's going to take three or four or five days in itself. So Sure, and uh, a lot of people. That's exactly right. There's four or five labs that will be involved in the diagnosis of an abortion. Um, get, get them here quickly, fresh and fixed tissue, whole fetus, whole placenta, seven to ten days you'll have a diagnosis. Maybe. That's exactly right. Maybe. When we come back from break, I want you to expand on that thought. Okay. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're really glad that you joined us today. This segment is brought to you by Lalaman Animal Nutrition, dedicated to the development and production of natural and differential solutions for animal nutrition. From Kansas State University, this is Agriculture Today. With Kansas being in drought conditions, causing a likely shortage in the feed supply, cow-calf producers must start thinking about alternatives to get them through both fall and winter this year. K-State Beef System Specialist Justin Wagner says producers should be looking for supplements that deliver both energy and protein. He feels that distillers' dried grains fit these criteria. As far as the wet distillers' grains, it's actually probably one of the best, what I would call a ration conditioner that we have really available to it for some of these, for lack of a better term, rough haze. Corn stalks, wheat straw that's been chopped and processed, uh, it fits well with those, blends together nicely, it adds a little bit of a moisture um, and texture to those, those type feeds. This is K-State Research and Extension. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of boron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. If our local animal agriculture industry disappeared, what else would disappear? 
The buses that get us to school. The playgrounds and ballparks we go to after school. The books and computers that help us learn and grow. Animal agriculture provides millions of dollars in tax revenue that pay for our school improvements, that pave the foundation that will build our future. A message from U.S. soybean farmers and their checkoff. This segment is brought to you by Rotomix, manufactured in the USA and designed for feeding performance in the feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Hi there, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, joined by Dr. Greg Hanselcheck. And we're talking about abortions in cows today, and, and we've had a great discussion on, you know, when they occur, the bacteria and, and viruses that cause them, Mm -hmm. and, and then the diagnostic samples in which we need to take. And, and then even when we do everything right, we're not necessarily going to get, get an answer from the diagnostic lab all the time, are we? No, unfortunately that's true. Right. Across the North America, we expect on any single abortion workup to get a diagnosis a little over half the time. Yeah, and I think that the, you know, we need to understand that there's you know, people that die every day eating their soup that we don't know why. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's not something, and medicine is not a fixed science. And, and so as we move forward and have an understanding that, you know, 50% of the time, you probably need to send in multiple samples. That's the key, multiple samples and a whole set of tissues. Okay. I mean, that's the key to getting a diagnosis. And then when we send in, uh, you know, partial s sets of tissues, we might have missed that you know, whether it's a piece of liver or, or kidney or whatever, where that infection was in the fetus. That's exactly right. And, and the, the most important piece of tissue that we can get is the placenta. Okay. And we know that's not always possible because Why? you don't always know which cow aborted or you can't get her in. <laughs> in time. I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of leg legitimate reasons, but a piece of placenta along with the fetal tissues increases our ability to come up with a diagnosis a lot. Why is the placenta important? Because it has, it usually has the classical signs of what the reason that animal aborted. Okay. Where the other tissues they may not. It, the it's kind of a the, filter. It's the filter. That's exactly right. Between the the fetus and the cow, and something might get stopped up in there and, and caught. I guess. That's exact. That's a great analogy. That's exactly right. So, so um, at the end of the day, if you're working with the producer that's having some abortions, what are some things that you would say? To them, I mean, you walk out there on the farm, and 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 we're, we've had ten abortions. I have a hundred head of cows. I've had ten abortions. You know, it, what what are some of the steps? What are some of the things post-abortion that that maybe this producer needs to think about? Well, the first thing is, unfortunately, whatever caused the abortion this year is probably just going to run its course. What we're our plan is to find the diagnosis and try to prevent it for the for the subsequent years. Right. So that needs to be set up front, and then then after that, it's a, it's just a matter of what's the vaccination program, what vaccines are you using, what is your biosecurity like? I mean, all those kind of things. What's your nutrition like in the cow herd? All those things then come into play to plan for next year. An introduction of new animals into the herd, quarantine. Absolutely, yeah. test and quarantine. And, and when we're going to test these animals, what are some of the things that you would recommend? The BVD, I take it? And the BVD, the IBR would be the two main things that I would test for. Test. Well, I think today has been a, just a remarkable show. I always enjoy having you on here. I appreciate so much what you do for the state of Kansas and, and, uh, and nationally um, for our beef industry and dairy industries. Thanks a million. It's my pleasure. Thank you for watching Doc Talk. If you want to know more about what Dr. Hanselcheck and I do here at Kansas State University, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Remember, always work with your local practitioner on cases such as this or any other cases that is associated with your animal. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. You've been watching Doc Talk. We're sure glad you joined us, and we'll see y'all down the road. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com.
Doc Talk was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, sure trace mineral supplementation by timed injection. We started using Multimin about four years ago. We started out first in our own cow herd and our own heifer replacement heifer program just to uh, see how it would work, um, experiment with it. We don't like to put a new pro product out there with our clients unless we've tried it ourselves or there's a lot of data behind it that we like. Um, we had really good results with it our first year, uh, really in, uh, were happy with the way things worked. Uh, so we decided to start using our clients, and we have been now for three years, and I would say 90 to 95 percent of our clients use Multimin. There are two problems with trace mineral intake in beef cattle. One is simply that uh, intake of trace minerals can be slightly unpredictable. The second thing is that uh, other minerals that are present in the diet in high proportions can actually interfere with trace mineral absorption. Uh, sulfur is a classic example of this problem. Uh, many of the feedstocks we use, like distiller's grain and corn gluten feed, are high in sulfur. In some cases, groundwater and surface water in Kansas can be high in sulfur. Uh, when dietary intake of sulfur is high, that means that copper uh, in particular and, and also possibly zinc can be absorbed from the gut in less than ideal proportions. When injecting a trace mineral product, you bypass that source of trace mineral antagonism in the gut because the, uh, the injected product is taken directly into the circulatory system for processing in the liver and deposition in the various storage sites within the body. A breeding female's body reserves for trace minerals are a little bit like a bank account. When there are periods of, of demand in that breeding female's life, uh, the, her bank account of trace minerals is rapidly consumed. I mean, two examples of, of critical physiological periods of need would include parturition, lactation, and then breeding that immediately follows the initiation of lactation. During these periods of time, the breeding female's body reserves of critical trace minerals are being uh, constantly drawn down. My opinion, the use of Multimin 90 allows a producer the option of assisting a beef female to perform at her genetic optimum through an optimized trace mineral nutrition program. It's possible to incorporate Multimin 90 treatment in conjunction with other health protocols such as vaccination for respiratory disease and clostridial diseases.